Hello everyone, my name is Tim Tan and a very warm welcome to you. Today we are going to bind a Linux CentOS 6.3 server to a Microsoft Active Directory domain. And this is going to aid in with systems administration by allowing uh, the users in the Active Directory, Directory domain to log on to the Linux server and to perform any necessary system administrative task. So this is my uh, lab. It's quite simple. I have two servers, linux.example.com and dc.example.com. <coughs> DC stands for Domain Controller. Now the first step is to create a DNS entry for the Linux server on the Windows server. <coughs> so this is my Windows server. I have already created an Active Directory domain and the name of the domain is example.com. So I'm going to start all programs, administrative tools, and DNS. And from here, if I expand the four lookup zones, I'll see that there's a zone called example.com, which has already been created. It was created during the installation of the Active Directory. <coughs> I create a new host here. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. And the name of the host is Linux. Uh, I know it's not a very original name, but I, I named it Linux for the sake of simplicity. And let me type in the IP address. And the record has been successfully created. Let me minimize this. Let's go back. So the next step is to install Samba Windbind on the Linux server using yum. And my telephone is ringing. And so let me type in yum install samba dash winbind dash y. <coughs> the y stands for yes, that means keep on answering yes. So it's downloading the package, it's installing the package, and we're good. Excellent. So let's go back to our instructions and now we need to verify um, we need to run the system administration and authentication so on the Linux server I, I click on system administration authentication and for the user account database <coughs> let me we'll select winbind now it says your win winbind domain that's the first entry now what is that so if I go back to the Windows server I click on start administrative tools and then I go to Active Directory users and computers computers sorry my throat's a little dry right now <laughs> uh, if I right click on the domain and if I click on properties it will show me the domain name pre Windows 2000 the name of the domain is example now this is the uh, the name which we're looking for let's go back type in example and the security model uh, make sure it's ADS is selected the windbind ADS realm now this most likely is the name of your domain for mine is example.com uh, but I'm going to type in here example.com in capital letters because this is referring to uh, the Kerberos realm and when you refer to a Kerberos realm, you use capital letters to, to represent it. Now, Kerberos is the authentication tool used by Active Directory. Uh, if you don't have Kerberos, you cannot authenticate to uh, the domain. It is absolutely essential. And the WinBind domain controllers, uh, the, the domain controller here is dc.example.com. Template shell, I'm going to use bash. I'm going to click on advanced option. I'm going to click this option here, create home directories on the first login. And I'm going to click join domain. It's going to ask me to save uh, the configuration uh, changes. I'm going to click save. <coughs> now it's asking for the username and password of a domain administrator. And it just so happens that I am a domain administrator. I put in my username and password and click OK and now I click apply and the windows closed 
but how do we know if the server has been bind to the active directory so I go back to my Windows server I'm in active directory users and computers I click on computers I right click on computers I click on refresh and it's refreshing and there we go my Linux server has been successfully bind or joined to the domain I double click on it it show you the DNS name linux.example.com excellent so let's go back to the instructions so we just did number four we verified that the server has been created in let me type here active directory users and computers now let's test the authentication so I'm going to close this and close this and I'm going to log out of root <coughs> Now from here, I'm going to click on other. Now I'm going to try to, to log on with my Windows account. <coughs> so I go back to my uh, Windows server. I created an OU called IT. And I have two users, Tim, that's me, and Fred, our desktop support technician. So I'm going to try to log on as Tim. So I type in the name of the domain, which is example, and then backslash. I type in Tim. I click on hit enter for login. I type in my Windows password. And if you look at it, lo and behold, I have now authenticated to the uh, Linux server with my Active Directory account. Excellent. So let me open up a terminal. Now this is pretty cool. If I type in PWD, present working directory, it's gonna show its home and then the name of the domain, example, and my name there, Tim. Okay, but there's um, there are a few issues with this setup right now. The first issue is that I am just a regular user in uh, on this, on the server. So I don't, I'm not a, so I don't have a pseudo rights. I don't have uh, rights to, to make any administrative changes. So if I type setup, it's asking me to authenticate as root. I, I don't have the root password. If I type pseudo setup, I type in my password, and it says here I'm not in the so doers file. Incident will be will be reported. So that's not very good. So let me log out. Uh, another issue is that since the Linux server has been bind to the domain, any user within this domain, example.com, can now log onto the server. You could be a regular domain user, you could be a domain admin, you could be uh, a power user. It doesn't matter. You can log. You sh you can log onto the, the system, the, the Linux server. So I'm going to use Fred as an example. Uh, if your name is Fred, if you are a desktop support technician, uh, I do apologize. Uh, I just chose the name Fred randomly. <laughs> um, I think it's a good name. So if you look at member of, it says that Fred is a domain user. So if I click on, I installed Putty here, which is our SSH client. Let me type in linux.example.com. I'm going to log in as Fred. And you can see that Fred can still log onto the system. Even though he's just a regular domain user, he can log onto the system. Anyone can log onto the system. So let me log out as Fred. And so let's change things a little. Let me log back in as the root. Well, we are going to go back to their instructions. Let's load it up. Okay. So what we want to do is create a new Active Directory group for title security. We want to bind this new Active Directory group to the Linux server so that only users in this new group can access or authenticate and log into the server. Okay. Um, and we so let's go to the Linux, uh, the Windows server. I'm in my ITOU. I'm gonna right click, click on, click on new, click on group. The name of the group it will be Linux underscore admins. And I'm going to make 
dom the domain admins members of this group okay and I'm going back to my Linux server and now how do we bind the group to uh, the Linux server now we do it through this file pam underscore winbind.conf so let me right click open up a terminal and let me type vim etsy security and it's pam underscore winbind.conf so you scroll down to the bottom go close to the bottom and you see right here there's a line that says require membership of let me get rid of the semicolon in the front let's go to the end and let's type in linux underscore admins let's save the file and we also want to make that group um, we want to give that group pseudo user rights as well so we need to modify this the pseudoers file and the way we do that is by typing in vi sudo we go close to the bottom let me add it in here just under root and when you add a new when you add a group to the sudo sudoers file you have to put in or if to add in a percent sign first the percent sign represents a states uh, well states that the the entry is a group so we have to put in the name of the of the domain which is example I type backslash twice because the backslash is a special character so I need the backslash to represent the backslash if not there'll be an error with only one backslash and I type in Linux underscore admins click tab all equals all and all so the Linux admins members of the Linux admins group will be able to run any command from anywhere. Now, I'm just doing this for the sake of this demonstration, but please, please, uh, in your production environment, know who you're giving pseudo user rights to and what kind of rights or the level of, uh, uh, level of rights which you're giving the person to. Because we can do a lot of damage if we give too much power to the wrong people. Oops. Let me let me save this right quick. Here we go. Okay. Ex uh, excellent. <clears throat> now, let me log out again. All right, and I'm going to now log in with my Windows domain account. So it's example backslash Tim password let's log in okay right click open in terminal I type sudo setup I type in my password and look I have sudo rights so I can do things like modify the firewall, change the IP address. So sudo works, excellent. We're very good to go. So let's go back to the Windows server. Remember in the past that Fred was able to log onto the server. So let's try it again right now because in theory, Fred should not be able to log onto the server because Fred is not part of the Linux admins group. So we'll connect example backslash Fred now I'm going to type in the password very slowly so that I will not make a mistake and it says that Fred Fred does not have access access is denied okay so let's close out of that <clears throat> so we know that authentic uh, the security is working only users within the this group the Linux admins group can log on to the Linux server and can have suit and has pseudo access rights Okay, let's say a good friend Fred has been working very hard. He bought a lot of books and and videos on Linux. He's been doing his studies and he recently got uh, Red Hat certified. So fantastic, good for you Fred. This is what we, we should be doing. So he is now our Linux administrator. 
and because of that we're gonna put him in the Linux admin admins group so Fred should now be able to log on to the server and he should be able to have pseudo rights so type in example backslash Fred put in his password and fantastic Fred has authenticated to a domain controller he's logged on to the Linux server now so let's see what Fred can do let's do sudo IP tables let's list what the rules are let's type in the password all right we have a bunch of rules here let's type again make it more clear okay okay so we just saw the rules so but can Fred do do greater modifications to the, uh, the IP tables let's try sudo IP tables dash F that's very dangerous that's a flush the IP uh, the firewall the, the rules and it looks like it happened so I do sudo IP tables dash L all the rules are gone so Fred has sudo access rights okay fantastic um, our authentication works and our authorization works okay very good I thank you all for watching this video I sincerely do hope that it does help you in your day-to-day -day, uh, task as a IT professional I, I wish you all a fantastic 2013 thank you take care and God bless